Welcome, everybody, to the Houston Alexander Podcast. Got my man, Big Norm, in the building. What's going on with you, man? Yo, yo, what's up? How you doing? Man, I'm, I'm good. I'm good, man. Uh, th- th- there's a reason why I got you up here, man, because you've been doing a lot uh, in the Omaha, Nebraska uh, community, man, with, with our kids. And, and people need to know what you got going on, but they have to know about the story you have behind you've been working with, the, with what you're working with these kids, man. So, uh, how did you get into uh, the the community activism, man? And and how did you get working with the kids? All right. So, um, in about 2013, uh uh-huh. um, you know, I left the military, and I told myself I wanted to work doing something that I love to do. Okay. You know, so I ended up working at a place called Mosaic, where I deal with um clients with developmental disabilities. Mm-hmm. And I'm okay. This this is great. But I, I want something uh, to deal with population of, 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 of people that I kind of can relate to even more. Okay. So, um, you know, interview with that Omaha Home for Boys. So we're going to the boys home for a few years. Then so you were seeking this specifically for exactly. this for this this, this different exactly. type of uh, to lifestyle. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Exactly. So I um, end, up, end up going there, man, and uh, told myself, like, OK, this is good. But I wanted to go a step further. You know, it was like once I learned something, I want to. You know, do more, do better. Okay. So um, I kind of wanted to get some certifications under my belt just to have knowledge of stuff so I can talk to kids about, help them with uh, pe- what, what people didn't help me with mm-hmm. as far as like signing up for college and stuff like that. So when I got a couple certifications, when I got my CDOs and stuff, because I know especially like inner city kids and men, they always have aspirations of being a CDO driver. They, okay. they know it's a lot of money in it and stuff like that. So. No, hold on. What do you say, CDL driver? What do you mean by CDL driver? You know, like dri- driving driving big rigs, trucks, and stuff like that. Okay. You know, they know there is a lot of money. Yeah, it's that. a lot of money in yeah, it. You know, and um, just like they, it's an old like little stigma, like all the girls want to be CNAs, and all the boys <laughs> want to be CDL drivers. So I went and got my CDA. So I was like, I was I was a power couple myself. I had my CNA, my med aid, my, my CDL. You, you, like you, you, you had all kind of degrees. Yeah, huh? yeah I wanted okay. to go get everything. So <laughs> okay. uh, so you know, I went and got that. And it took me some time away from, you know, working with the youth. Mm-hmm. So I ended up uh, going going to, like, a couple clubs and stuff in the city. And I started getting into fights. And I noticed that that Hold was on, my rotation. Wait, wait, wait. How do you go from CDL to fight? I mean, because, what? okay, okay, okay so look, so look, so look, let me so let me take a step back. So, um, you know, I was going to get my CDLs. I wasn't working at the time. Okay. You know, it's just going to school. Because you, you got to go when to school. Ahead, so when you kind of stagnate, you kind of. Yeah, I get in yeah, trouble. Man. Yeah, yeah man. when you stagnate, you get in trouble, right? So. I'm going to the club and stuff, you know, getting a few fights, and my name started getting kind of tarnished in the community. So, um, one day a guy you fresh out the military, brother, right? I was, I'm I was fresh out, and I got I got in trouble in the military for for um for like gang ties because when I come back home from training and stuff, you know, they would they would I didn't know how many officers were in the military also, okay. so they would so they knew there's a lot of officers yeah, in the military. They knew what was going on yeah. on the streets, and yeah. they would. Come and put me to the side while I was going to military training and ask me questions like, man, you should be involved in that stuff like that. You know, try to keep me on the right path. And okay. I ended up letting my gang ties and affiliation kind of strip me from progressing in the military and stuff like okay. that. So uh, when they kind of offered me a way out that wasn't like a dishonorable discharge, it was it was like, because I know dishonorable discharge can kind of ruin you for they a lot can, of stuff. They can, yeah, they can ruin your yeah, career. Yeah, they said, man, we can give you misconduct <clears throat> and you and you can go ahead and just, because we can't have this in the military. Yeah, you got you to bail out. I, yeah, right. I bailed out, you know, and plus I have my father, you know, he's paralyzed, so it was a way for me to get home and take care of him and help him because he needed me. So let's let's go back to the beginning. Yeah. Because, you know, you just said the military and you just said a few things you were doing. How did this begin? You know, how did, the, how did this gang life begin for you, man? You know, how did, how did it begin? All right, when where and where do you start with something something like that, man? All right, I say this, you know, like it, it's living situations, living environments. You know, I, I I say stuff all the time, like Section Eight is everybody OGs because if it was for Section Eight, <laughs> section, your mom, Section Eight, <laughs> if it were for Section okay. Eight, a lot of our moms wouldn't even live in them environments. You know what I'm saying? Like you only from this hood because you, you grew up in you grew up in this neighborhood. Okay, nine times out of ten. So your started, family, you think it started with you being in, in <laughs> Section Eight housing? Definitely, definitely Section Eight housing. You know, because I wouldn't. I wouldn't know who these dudes is, you know what I'm saying? But like for me, it it, it, it kind of goes deeper, you know, because my, my my family, as far as father, you know, uncles, family members, were tied to a certain gang in the city. Okay, no, no, what gang was that, man? Let's put it, let it, let it be known. It, it was South Family. Oh, right, so, so South, South Family, okay. Projects. Yeah, so um, you know, born, I was born in South Projects. Okay, my mom did a lot of did a lot of moving through the Section Eight. Um, get into abusive, she got into abusive relationships. So we're moving and stuff, you know, from different states to states. Okay. It was a time where I went to a school for a day in a whole different state. Like, we was like four different states. You know, wow, I went to a school for a day. 
And that taught and me how, how to be, How old was you at the time, man? I'm like eight, nine, you know, and that taught me how to be like um how to kind of be an asshole, kind of cold hearted because I can't make no friends because I know I'm not gonna be here in a week. But also taught me how to make friends because like I go to different schools, go to different places. Yeah, I know how to be like I don't know. Best of both worlds. Be right? a cool right? kid. Best of both worlds, right? So um, you know, we moved to Texas to a place called Stop Six, we call them Stop Six Projects. It's the first time I really seen gang banging. Like, you know, like uh they on first for they get all that, you know, so I, we're, we're living there, and it's the first time I saw my first murder. You know, I, I'm, but I'm it's crazy years because, 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 you, because you hold on, you but you left an environment, right? That that was involved with gangs, yeah. And even you moving away, yeah, got involved with gangs and yeah, without even even thinking about it. Yeah, right? So that, that's kind of crazy. Huh? I'm thinking about it. Yeah, I didn't know Omaha was that bad when I was younger because, like, I'm seven, eight years old. You know, so you know, moved to Texas. You know, I see some stuff happen outside. I run out there. I'm seeing. I see the dude getting stabbed, and the police come and. You no, know, he ended he end up, you know, being murdered. But you're seeing all this at a young age, man. Right. And and right. to me, I think a lot of a uh, lot of crazy stuff that happens to a lot of our, our our kids is what they've seen and some of the some of the situations they've been around. Right. So so you went to Texas. What, what what brought y'all back to Omaha? So my mom ended up going to a shelter in Texas, and I couldn't go because it was a a woman shelter. So she had to send me to back to Omaha to live with my dad. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, I'm, I'm back here. So you back here and your dad's affiliated, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, he he's in a wheelchair, so he's not really like he's not really affiliated though. But this he still is who he is, you know. Mm-hmm. People understand that. So like, I mean, house the guy rated? Why he paralyzed? You know, I'm I'm, I'm a kid. You know, I, I we leave. I go I go stay with family. Again, and stuff, the environment, you know, so was, the environment again. Yeah, you know? yeah, environment. You know, just who he is. I mean, guys even shooting at his house. You know what I'm saying? Like he's in a wheelchair because he was that feared when he was when he was walking. You know, he he was a problem. So um. You know, even like when I caught my first little charge when I was like when I was like 10, 11. Yeah. You know, uh, the, the judge sent some stuff like, I mean, it's like the prosecutor reading my dad file, like Minister Society, that and I'm like, that ain't me. Like, oh, 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 I ain't right. doing that. You're on a 10, you're on 10 years old. old. <laughs> <What> the, <laughs> I'm, on, my, my auntie in the courtroom looked like, because my mom, she's snapping. She like, y'all do this, my baby. My, my auntie in there with me. They kicked my mom out the courtroom. The prosecutor reading off, we shouldn't give him another chance. I'm like, it's my first charge. Like, I'm ten years at old. At ten years old, what what type what type of charge do you have as a ten year old, man? Why not? I was trying to sell drugs. Okay. I was trying to sell drugs. Like I was trying to sell drugs. Why? I, I was stupid. I mean, I don't. I don't know. I was just doing again. But you, you but you learn it, and but it's the environment you're in. Yeah, you know, it's vi- right, right. Just environment. I'm, I'm around. Like I mean, I I I know a lot of dudes, older dudes that had money. I know what it looked like. I know how they was getting the money. So I'm like. I'll just steal some of y'all weed if I if I catch y'all sleeping. Like, like, oh, okay. <laughs> I'll just some of y'all weed and go, uh, you know, make a few plays. You know? uh, but uh, but here but here we go. You were you ten years old. You in court. Yeah. You know, and you you when did when did everything start changing for you, man? Because because again, I heard you was a great athlete. Yeah. So yeah. so how did how did you start coming back to uh to working with the kids? I mean, so my my, my dad was on me. My dad always told me not, not to be like him. You know, he, 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 you know, his, his walking ability was taken away. His walking ability was taken away, but his, but, but, but his voice got even stronger. Okay. He always told me, I want you to be like me. I want you better than me. And every time I would do something to get in trouble, legal issues and stuff, he'd be disappointed. You know, and that hurt me more than anything seeing my father disappointed, you know? So as I'm getting older, I get in middle school. And he told me, hey man, play sports, start working out. My dad gave me, like, he's a workout regimen to do. Cause my dad was like six, four, two sixty. It was a big so, dude. So even know? though your dad was in a wheelchair, you know, he still, still was on the best still, father I could still, yeah. still putting game definitely, in the ear. Definitely. And definitely. still still being that father figure that, that he needed to be. Yeah, and it and it made me more respected because I see these grown men who gangsters ex convicts get out of jail respecting his word. So I'm like, if, if this murderer can respect him, a millionaire can respect him, I can respect him. Like, it's my dad. My dad really he, he ain't no fake. You know what I'm yeah, saying? He so, about the, he, he about that life. Yeah, he about that life. So I'm like, I'm gonna listen to everything he's saying because you know his word is word is bond and he's really a man. So I get to middle school, boom! I catch another drug charge, and because you're still trying to be, still, you're still, trying, you're still to, trying to be I'm around that stupid. environment. Yeah, just just uh, okay, just stupid. And um, I got suspended for 19 days. And my principal there, love her to death. Her name was Deborah Doctor Fry, Doctor Deborah Friesen, at King Science Center. She told me like she she had this long talk with me, and she said I'm gonna keep my eye on you. I'm like yeah, whatever, lady. I ended up going to high school. Boom! She becomes my principal at my high school too. Well, well, Follow me to Burke. Uh, yeah, I know. I know. I know, I know Doctor <laughs> hey, yeah, So uh, we, know, we know. Everybody right, knows who right. she is. So you know, it was the fact that what made me really, really, because when you, when you know people care about you, when you're a young guy from American Mill, especially, when you know people care about you, and you know like they're holding you accountable for everything you do. 
not just seeing it, but really putting that forth that, you know, that effort. You know, like um, so I'm in high school and stuff, and I'm not really like I'm like, man, it's high school stuff easy. It's a lot of, you know, kids who go to school, they feel like it's too easy so they don't do the work. They procrastinate. Mm -hmm. That yeah. was me. Like the fries one but usually, but you you probably was a smart kid in smartest, school, smartest but like, doing doing crazy stuff. Smartest hell because I mean I was a young hustler, and like just being street smart had kind of helped me become book smart. Like common sense, everything, everything, everything basically is basic and common sense. Yeah, everything. Like I was a freshman in geometry. Like that ain't something a lot of freshmen get into. I went to King Science Center Magnet School, so we all was in algebra eighth grade. Most yeah, of us, what? Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's shocking everybody when they hear my story. Like no, like. You was a smart kid. What you mean? Yeah, I was smart. I was clever, very slick too. But see, but dog, most people who who hustle on the street and who who are who who regulate their own situations yeah. are smart kids. Yeah, and I had to be because I had to grow up at a young age. Because again, my dad was paralyzed. I was the only child, so I had to grow up. I had to grow up a little a little quicker, be a little slicker. You know, it was just be me and be and be a man of the house. Be a man of that. You be a man of the house. And my mom, I'm the only boy. I'm the only boy and the youngest. So I definitely had to man up. You know, that's so why my nickname is Daddy O. Like, I had to be the daddy of the house. I had to man up. I'm not calling you Daddy O. I know. <laughs> big nor, big nor fine. So, uh, <laughs> so you know, I, I tell myself, everything going on in high school, you know, I'm living on 24th Street, but I'm yeah. going to school to 120th. I chose Burke, and I remember I was one of my only friends that when you, in middle school, you go to pick the high school you want to go to. Yeah. I'm the only one that went into Burke. I don't know what I was thinking. I'm like, I want to get away from this, from, from, well, from, that's from what the hood. Thinking. You want to get away from get the away. neighborhood. I want to get away from yeah. the neighborhood. So, I go in there, boom. Sign my paperwork that the fries asked me where I'm going. I said, I'm going to Burke. And she like just smiled at me. I'm like, what, what is she smiling at me for? I didn't know she was going to make that switch and go up there with me, right? So um, I'm at Burke, man. Like I said, though, I'm a. But you're, you're an athlete as well because you're, yeah, you're playing football. Yeah, you're, yeah, you're doing yeah. Other, other sports. Yeah. I, I also went out to, uh, for track and stuff, and I ended up just giving up on that. Like, I, I just quit on a lot of stuff. Well, why, man? Why did you, why, you know, why, why such an exceptional athlete? Why did you give up? I mean, so. Front, like I had friends dying around me, you know what I mean. Like some of my best friends was getting in situations in the neighborhood. Cause remember, it's like a different world. I'm on 120th. I see all these kids coming to school with, car with cars and stuff, man. I'm like, what the hell? I'm riding this bus back to 24th Street, mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> so like, uh, it was just like, I, I don't know. Culture shock, man. Yeah, I mean, yeah. And I felt like I, I wasn't going nowhere. Like, man, we ain't going nowhere. I'm not. I'm not even finna chase this little this little fake dream. But but even with Dr. Faze and you, you know, she even with her. So called guiding you Yeah you, you know You still it, was doing Left field stuff I was man I was being fake I was being very mischievous with her You know I, I, I was being fake You know what I'm saying And, and she kind of And Mr. Lee Also another principal He brought this to my attention You know what I'm saying Because I asked him one day He came and got me from class Okay I'm like man Why don't you just expel me man Like why don't you just expel me I'm not You know I'm coming to school late You know what I mean Like I, I had my so, senior, say, oh, okay, now you got these people that are not giving up on you. Yeah, you know, and that's what I'm saying. When people don't give up on you, that makes you want to go the extra mile. Yeah. And man. I told myself, when I get older, I want to be able to push these kids to where I'm not going to give up on you because I know how it feels, though. You know, I was a I was a senior with sophomore credits. Hmm. And I graduated on time with more credits than what I needed. Wow. Because hmm. I know when I when I when I when I get my my mind on something, I got that Kobe, that mama mentality. Like but say, but, I'm but, go but, crazy. But, but, but no, my now, now we were speaking earlier. You said uh, your, your sister got shot. Yeah, yeah. And so then, yeah. What, what, she yeah. get she get she get shot while you was in high school. Yeah, she got shot while I was in high school. So um, and how, now my, what happened with that? I, so I, I was bringing my homeboys around. You know, I'm bringing guys over south around to North Omaha. They come to my house and all that stuff. I used to always tell my sisters because again, I'm the only boy, so I'm very territorial. Yeah, I don't want y'all around my homeboys. I don't want y'all around my homeboys. Like, don't be with them. Oh, you was that that brother? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like like very like whenever they bring boyfriends up, I got beat your boyfriend up. Like just. I didn't no no I'm not playing on that okay especially when I got more uh, you know I got you know like I'm stepping I'm standing on everything okay you know I told her I went around my homeboys and one summer day she gone with him boom I get a phone call at my dad house broke me down like sister she got shot paralyzed I'm like what happened she was in a car with my homeboys went up put her on with the gun went off and hit her wow you know at that point I'm like damn my daddy you know what I'm saying like shot shot paralyzed I got homeboys all in high school. That ain't been murdered. You know what I mean? Like, because when I was in high school, that's when it was the 30 shootings and 30 nights. Like, Omaha really had turned up. Like, yeah. you know, that's when the city was really, 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 really active with, with yeah. gang violence. Um, So, again, boom, my sister gets shot and paralyzed. And I lost a good friend, too. Uh, Markel Thomas was his name. Real, real good friend of mine. Uh, situation went bad. So, I'm just in high school kind of hurt, man. Like, But, man, when did it change? When did it change for you, man? When, when, did, when did you just, just say enough was enough? Um, when did we, so when did we, is it when you went to the military? What what? I what quit, happened? No, 
I mean, the military, I, I still was doing stupid. So I guess that's why they kind of, you know, I was always like on the verge of doing stupid stuff, but always try to keep my good, my good card right here. Like, I don't want to be too stupid. You know, like, yeah. so I ended up quitting the team and Dr. Friesen, I'm at home, Dr. Friesen made the SRO. What's the SRO? The school, a uh, yeah, school resource officer. Okay. She made him leave the school to come pick me up in my football equipment. I get to the school. I go in her office. She said, go in Mr. Lee's office. I go in his office. Johnny Rogerson right there. Okay. I'm like, what? I'm like, who is this? I didn't know who he was. He said, I'm Johnny Rogers. I'm like, okay. He schooled me on like, game. Ooh, Boone, so I am. I'm like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> what's up, Mr. Rogers? You know, we talking. He like, I'm Mr. Lee, why you bring him up here to talk to me? Like, because I want you to still play football. I'm like, man, whatever. Mm -hmm. I just, but I still just shut down on it. You know, right. one of my football coaches, Damon Avant, he was up there at Burke. He kept telling me, man, if you want to do that, man, just one day come to boxing, come fight or something. Okay. So I kept it in my mind down the line. So after high school and stuff, I'm like, okay, boom, what's next? I remember just being by myself so much, like, as far as making decisions on my life, because I really feel like I was a man. Okay. My mom in the streets, you know, doing what she's doing. My dad can't be there with me. I'm picking my college. I'm, I'm in there doing financial aid and, and all that stuff. Doing all the things that, that parents uh, help you out man, with. See? Every, every other yeah, kid man. was there with parents. I'm by myself. Yeah, other kids had upper bound with them, had tutors. I'm like, this shit crazy. Like, I'm in there by myself like, yeah, yeah. man, like, big boy, you know, like, whatever. So I'm in there doing it. Boom, I'm going to Iowa Western. And I couldn't even stay there for as long as I as I wanted to because um my financial aid and all that stuff. I guess I did the paper wrong. Hey man, hey the hey. <laughs> financial aid you you don't have it straight. They, yeah, they, they booting you out. I, I did the paper wrong. Or they, or, or they are kicking you out. One of them. Yeah, so I, I encourage everybody to be involved in they in their people's lives, man. Like somebody be involved in, the, in these kids' lives. Man, find a counselor, find, find a counselor, someone yeah, that a they, they, they can help you. They can help you yeah, with that with that financial definitely. aid, especially if you're going to college. Definitely, definitely. And I I, I didn't I guess I didn't take it seriously, you know. But I'm like. I went in there, did that, boom, and I'm going to Iowa Western. I was living in other people's uh, kind of apartments with them because I didn't have no apartment on campus. Mm. My, I messed my financial aid up. But eventually, they ended up giving me one boom with the football players. And I'm like, you know what? I'm about to stay in here with them. My, I have some Hawaiian brothers. It was in there with me. And I'm like, man, I'm about to try out for the football team. So, boom. I'm like, okay. I'm about to try to walk on to Iowa Western. So, I'm talking to the coaches and stuff, going to the weight room with them. And I got a phone call. I got to come home. Stuff happened with the family as far as my dad. So I had to come home, leave college, come take care of my daddy. Which I, I'm always gonna do and that. Man, being the man of the house, yeah, again, yeah, yeah. So come take care of my, take, come up take care of my father. And uh, I'm like, man, I, again, I'm stagnant I'm with him. When I'm not with him, I'm with my homeboys. I'm hanging out, you know. I'm doing stupid stuff, you know. It was a fight at Club X. That shot, that, I mean, that shut Club X down. I was one of the guys out that started the fight out there fighting and stuff. You know what I mean? And I joined the military a couple, like a year before that, joined the National Guard. Because I'm like. But you're still out there doing crazy stuff. Still out there doing stupid stuff. Being fake. Again, being fake. Yeah. You know, um, joined the National Guard. Because I'm like, you know what? I don't want to leave my dad. I can still be here to my, fulfill my military duties. And who not going to hire you if you got a National Guard, if you can put that on your resume? Yeah. Everybody going to hire you. You know what I'm saying? So I do that. I'm coming home. I thought I was smarter than the system. I'm like, man, I'm about to use this weight. I'm about to put. Pull my weight around, you know, everywhere I go. Mm -hmm. So when the police pull me over, I'm like, I'm in the National Guard, like, you da da da, like, uh, you know, no, <laughs> yeah, no, 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 not with that attitude, you know. Oh, really, you National Guard? We are too. We're going to talk to you, da da da. I'm like, oh man. <laughs> so I like, get in a fight and stuff, man. And it was crazy because when I'm at training, we wake up in the barracks. This is what they call when you, you know, like we're all like in a bunker. Yeah. You, know, you, you, you and your, you in a party that you're in, you know, as far as the military terms, you're in a bunker. I, I get woken up on my sleep. They're like, man, is somebody trying to get you killed up the army? I'm like, well, why, why you say that? One of my guys was like, man, because my specialist said, man, somebody wrote the gang you're affiliated with in the bathroom stalls. I'm like, that wasn't me, bro. I was asleep. Like, man, why y'all playing this game with me? Like, so you had people, you had people in your your own unit. unit yeah, I'm like, you say, yeah, why y'all why y'all playing this game with me, man? Like, come on, like, I had some sergeants calling me, like, what up, OG? Like, there's like weird stuff. I'm like, man, I'm, I can't wait to get out of here. Like, but, I can't. But, but here, but the fast forward, let you know, let's get past the, the fast forward, man. You you've been having all these difficulties mm -hmm. from 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 start from 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 the middle part of the, the start the middle part of it and now we at the end of this situation where you what do you, what are you doing now for the kids what are you doing for yourself and what did you what did you do to change that best decision I made was um working uh, going to OPS okay. work, working inside the school system and uh, like I said one day working inside the school system I was a um, Oh man, what was my term? I was basically a behavioral specialist. Okay, you you, with, you, but you still was working with, working with the kids. behavioral kids, and that's when like I said I couldn't be fake because these kids' parents come into the school. 
they'll see me on a weekend or something. I'm like, I can't be fake. You know what I mean? I got to really switch my life around. And that's kind of the first steps I took. You know what I mean? I just thought about everything and couldn't be fake with these kids. And I didn't get another shot. And I was but well, working for OPS. Not just an OPS, but as far as the staff, they pay the staff, you know, once a month. Most of the staff once a month. All right. And, my, and they pay for the whole year, even when you're not working. So my take-home checks after, like, taxes and all that stuff was like 500 bucks a month. Mm. I said, I can't do this. But I was doing it for longer than a year because I really let the kids. Yeah. So I ended up um, going, boosting up, going to the Urban League in Nebraska. You know, I'm doing, like, youth attendance stuff. And I was at Monroe Middle School and stuff, working with the kids there, you know, helping the truancy cases and also doing, um, speaking on behalf of the gang unit to, to kids and stuff, you know, yeah. uh, with Terrence Mackey and those guys. And I told myself again, okay, boom, I want to do more, but I kind of want to do stuff on my own terms. Yeah. Kind of be like my own boss. So I started doing contract work, you know, uh, with different agencies in Nebraska. Uh, right now I'm working on trying to get some halfway houses together and stuff like that. I met with a lawyer not too long ago, but I'm just trying to do a lot I can for the community. Like I do a lot of free uh, charitable work on my own. But see, you know, the one thing about it, man, is that every time I saw you, you was with a, with a group of kids. Right. You was all right. you was always trying to do for the for the kids, right, man. Right. And, and and I think that you bring a lot to the table with what happened to you from 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 then till now. Right. So, man, it's good to see you out doing what you're doing. That's the reason why I even had to have you up here, man, man to explain to these kids that even though you might start off a certain way, this is how you can end a certain way. And and you said a, a few things that I, I appreciate. You don't want to be fake. Right. You can't be fake with kids because they'll 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 look right past you. I don't care if you how much how much muscle you got or right. or how tall you are or what that that you cannot be fake with kids. Right. So no. so um, and trying to be a boss right now. Where are you at now with, with your career and your community activism? Uh, so right, right now I consider myself you know a boss. I I I've, I've basically um conquered myself in in a lot of aspects. You know I'm not fully there yet, but you know like I said right now I'm working on um. So, so no going, no, so no going back to the to the no the, going back. The, the, the no go back. No going back. Right, no going just, back again. You move forward. I can't be fake. I can't be talking to these state representatives about X, Y, and Z, having cocktails and cigars with these CEOs, and I'm over here acting like you know y'all watch the show Power, acting like James St. Patrick. I'm a murderer over here, but I'm a businessman right here. Like I, I you just can't be fake. You know you got to be real with yourself. Yeah, real. Be, be real with yourself. Be real with yourself first. Yeah, definitely. So you know, um, I, I, I'm. On, on my own, I give to the community as far as quizzing kids. Hey, name me five presidents. They name it to me here. hundred bucks for everybody. You know, just stuff like that. It's oh, not. Well, hold on. I, yeah, I, like I can't even name five presidents. Man, you, you, and, and, and it's crazy somebody. because I make I make sure I make sure that I post all that type of stuff because what it does is this though. I don't look for. The, I don't care about statuses. People saying all oh, people are attention seeking. No, I'm not attention seeking. If I want attention seek, I could take off my shirt, show some muscles or something. See me, I do it because. How many inboxes I get people saying that's inspiration? I'm about to go do this. You always inspiring somebody. For every little ten haters, it's, it's one person that's inspired by it, and that's exactly. all I care about. You know, so like I, I make sure that I, I broadcast what I, the positivity that I do. Somebody always want to positive, always want to broadcast the negativity. Mm -hmm. You know, so I mean, it's, it's it's the same thing. You can look at the glass half empty or half full. You know, hey, but it is what it is. So I make sure that I do that type of stuff for the kids, so they can see me and be like, okay. I even make sure I look a certain way. I make sure I keep my physical fitness up to date because the kids look at you when you walk into the room. Yeah, man. They want to ask you questions. What do you do? Mm -hmm. They want to assume that you're either an ex-athlete or you probably didn't got the pen. But you know, but, but this ask is you that question. This is, you, this is you doing this on a daily basis. On a, da on a daily Take basis. Take care of yourself. I'm, yeah, and, and, and it teaches me to be very disciplined. I wake up at 4 in the morning. Wake up at 4 in the morning. Every morning, go to the gym. Then after that, I drop the kids off at school. At around 9, I'm back at the gym. Either I'm, I'm splitting it up with cardio and, and then tr uh, weight training afterwards, you know. I want the kids, I want people to ask me questions to start a conversation. But you know, it's, it's funny because you remind me of uh, another brother uh, who's probably doing the same things you're doing right now, Ryan Coleman. Definitely. Ryan Coleman Jr. Love, love, uh, you know, love and, Burger. Yeah, he, he, you know, he had, grew up in the same situation, but right. you know, he, you know, he, he it not necessarily grew up the same as what you did, but he had people around right. him that try to bring him in, in, Definitely. in too. Definitely. So uh, uh, how can people get in touch with you, man, to, 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 uh, Finish all the things that you want to do as a boss. How can people get in touch with you uh, to to get that message from you? I would say the best way is my new and clean, improved Facebook. Um, is I mean Norman Grayson. You know, I also have a. Oh, you don't give them the government, huh? I don't give them the, the government. Right there, okay. I gotta be real. Gotta be real. I'm, I'm not wanted. You know what I mean? Like 
I got to be real. Um, so Norman Grayson. Also, I, I have um, my emails and stuff. Um, Norman Grayson, H2O at Outlook.com. Um, people can reach out to me for, for anything, you know, have questions or anything like that. You know, got any events coming up you need some sponsors or help with, you know, I, I can get the guys. I, I can, you know, make 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 do what it do, you know, so I'm, I'm all hands on board. But hey, man, I, I just appreciate you coming up and, and telling parts of your story, man, because, again, a lot of kids out there that are struggling with with the with the family, um, but, but, but probably the situation. It could be with kids. It could be with uh, something that's happened on the Internet. People need to hear stories like this because but you're not alone. You're not alone, and there, there are people out there that, that can help you, and you that you can follow after that, that could help you uh, better yourself. So, man, hey, I appreciate you coming up, man. You, you are a man amongst men, and we need people like you in our community, man, talking to these kids uh, and, and, and talking to some, some of these adults because right. some of these adults need need to be talked to as well. Definitely. So um, any, any last words, man, before we get out of here for the podcast? Oh, man, all praise to the most high. I appreciate you for having me. All Shout right. out to Ron Coleman Jr., man. Love you, boy. <laughs> I mean, hey, I, but uh, Sam, before we get out of here, man, um, I got to really be real with you, man. Um, I really do hate you. I understand. Um, you know, you you, you done packed on uh, some muscle. <laughs> 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 you, you you take care of yourself. Uh, you, you're doing good stuff for the community. And, uh, you know, man, I'm a, let me be the first one to hate on you on camera. Can I, can I do that, dog? Yeah, you know what's funny? You, you, you've <laughs> Let inspired me. The first me. one to hate. You've inspired me more than, than than a lot of people, and I never got the chance to tell you that. You know, I appreciate you for everything you do. I remember, I was working at the boys' home. Me and my my boy saw you at Walmart. Man, it was all the way authentic. Just just came off fresh off a fight. You know, we saw you at Walmart on Ames when it first got up. You know, all love was there. Then also. I used to run into you at the gym playing the fitness early in the morning. Man, I'm going at four. You going at four? But, but see, but, but see, <laughs> hey, but see, great minds think alike. Big definitely, Norm. definitely. So, Big Norm, I appreciate you coming up, man. Thank you. And Thank again, you. how can people get in touch with you? Your Facebook page is what? Norman Grayson. No, the the government. The government. But, uh, government. But, uh, hey, hey, from South Family to your family. Definitely. That's how. That's how. <laughs> yeah, yes, sir. Yeah, from South Family to your family, brother. I appreciate okay. you, man. Yes, sir. Thank you. I appreciate. All right, you. No, no doubt, man. All yes, right, sir. cool. Thank you. All right, we appreciate everybody uh, checking out the Houston Alexander podcast. Uh, if you want to be on the uh, the podcast, go to hAlexanderOmaha dot com. Uh, yeah, dot com, and you email me. All right. Uh, be seeing you. They don't.